today we will be talking about inflammatory bowel diseases which is a very important topic from examination point of view be it viva theory or entrance exam and also clinically ibd represents a group of intestinal disorders that cause prolonged inflammation of the digestive tract we have two important types of ibds the crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis i'll be talking about the important differences and similarities between both of them so let's begin now crohn's disease involves any area of the git whereas ulcerative colitis specifically involves the colon and the rectum crohn's disease is transmural in involvement that is all layers can be involved whereas in ulcerative colitis we see the involvement to be only submucosal submucosal only now coming to the epidemiology of ibds we see a female preponderance that is females are more commonly involved as compared to males also there is a bimodal age distribution where two peaks are seen one during the age group of 15 to 20 years and the other in the elderly 60 above also IBD is more common in Caucasians. Caucasian race includes Europeans, parts of Western, Central, and South Asia. So, Caucasians, we have the Europeans and some parts of the Asians. Now, move now moving on to the Crohn's disease in detail. Coming to the most common site, we have the ileum, the ileocecal valve, and the cecum. Now, coming to the gross appearance. In gross appearance in Crohn's disease we see the presence of skip lesions in skip lesions we have the lesions which are not continuous but surrounded by normal mucosa as you can see here so these lesions are known as skip lesions and are a feature of Crohn's disease the ulcers in Crohn's disease are deep knife like serpentine there is also a cobblestone appearance cobblestone where parts of colon look like a cobblestone street because of recurring inflammation and healing it is similar to pseudo polyp in ulcerative colitis moving on to the intestinal wall the intestinal wall is rubbery and thick in crohn's disease now we'll move on to the staining features the appearance on staining we see transmural involvement we also see something which is known as cryptitis cryptitis is basically presence of neutrophils in a crypt neutrophils in a crypt and when these neutrophils increase in number they form what is known as the crypt abscess so neutrophils increase in the crypt abscess there is also granuloma which is a non caseating one moving on to the clinical features we see intermittent attacks of diarrhea abdominal pain fever we also see weight loss and fatigue there is also a sense of incomplete evacuation sense of incomplete evacuation now we will talk about the extra intestinal manifestations of crohn's disease in extra manif intestinal manifestations we have uveitis which is basically swelling of the middle layer or the uvea of eye so uveitis is swelling of uvea this uveitis is also seen in other autoimmune disorders i'll name a few of them here one of them is rheumatoid arthritis ra for short then we have psoriasis and we have also sarcoidosis another extra intestinal manifestation seen in crohn's disease is the migratory polyarthritis here the pain spreads from one joint to another and the first joint may start to feel better that is why this is known as migratory polyarthritis moving on to the third one is the ankylosing spondylitis here the arthritis affects the spine it causes the fusing of the vertebrae and that is why it is the rigid or the bamboo spine bamboo spine now we will move on to ulcerative colitis 
the most common site for ulcerative colitis are the colon and the rectum. On gross appearance, we see that it involves rectum and extends proximally. The mucosa is red and granular. The ulcers, they are broad based. There is also something which is known as the pseudopolyps. The pseudopolyps basically result because of the cycle of ulceration and healing, which leads to the creation of scar tissue. They resemble a polyp and that is why they are known as pseudopolyp. There is ulcer here and this ulcer will heal and this cycle will continue and the scar tissue will, will keep on piling up. So this will form the pseudopolyp. Another very important feature of ulcerative colitis is the presence of toxic megacolon. Toxic megacolon, basically there is abnormal dilatation and this abnormal dilatation can be due to any infection like the clostridium. clostridium. And this clostridium infection can lead to shock also and that is why it is known as toxic. Toxic because it can lead to shock or even to fatal and megacolon because there is dilatation. Now we will move on to the staining appearance. On staining we see ulceration. We also see cryptitis and crypt abscess as seen in case of Crohn's disease. And here we also see that the granuloma is not present. We saw that in Crohn's disease there was a non-caseating granuloma but here the granuloma is not seen. Clinical features are bloody diarrheal attacks, abdominal pain, there is also an increased risk of other autoimmune disorders in case of ulcerative colitis. Now moving on to the extra intestinal manifestations is the risk of primary sclerosing cholangitis. Now what is primary sclerosing cholangitis? This is basically a chronic liver disease chronic liver disease which leads to inflammation and fibrosis of the intra and the extra hepatic bile ducts. So it is a chronic liver disease which affects the bile ducts. The bile ducts. Now we'll move ahead. I'm going to list out some important differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis now that will quickly recap the entire thing. So in Crohn's disease, the most important site is the ileum and the cecum. <clears throat> in ulcerative colitis, the colon and the rectum. The extraintestinal manifestations we see uveitis in Crohn's disease and primary sclerosing cholangitis in case of ulcerative colitis. In Crohn's disease, we see that smoking is a risk factor, whereas in ulcerative colitis, we see that smoking is protective. But that doesn't mean that you start smoking because smoking is harmful in a lot of other ways and diseases. Now coming to the gross appearance, we see skip lesions present in case of Crohn's disease but they're not seen in ulcerative colitis. The cobblestone appearance is seen in Crohn's disease but not in ulcerative colitis. Pseudopolyps on the other hand are seen in ulcerative colitis but not in Crohn's disease. Moving ahead, Toxic megacolon is seen in ulcerative colitis but not in Crohn's disease. We have thick bowel lumen in Crohn's disease but not in ulcerative colitis. The deep knife-like ulcers are seen in Crohn's but in ulcerative colitis we have superficial broad-based ulcers. On staining granuloma, a non-caseating one is seen in Crohn's but no granuloma is seen in ulcerative colitis. Cryptitis is seen in both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis but more prominent in case of ulcerative colitis. Similarly, cryptapsis is also seen both in ulcerative and Crohn's but more prominent in case of ulcerative colitis. There is transmural involvement in case of Crohn's disease but submucosal involvement in case of ulcerative colitis. There is less risk of carcinoma in case of Crohn's disease but the risk of carcinoma is increased in case of ulcerative colitis, probably due to mole ulceration. Moving on to the radiological signs. In Crohn's disease, we see the string sign of Cantor. This is a very important sign which is seen on the barium meal x-ray. Barium meal x-ray. Here in the bowel lumen, we see string of pearl appearance. As you can see here, I have drawn it. The string of pearl appearance is seen in Crohn's disease. 
In ulcerative colitis, on the other hand, we have a lead pipe or the hose pipe appearance. Here, there is absence of hostrations. These hostrations which are seen normally is absent in case of the ulcerative colitis, which can be seen on the x-ray. And there is also distension, which can also lead to toxic megacolon. So this kind of sums up our inflammatory bowel diseases. Hope you learned from it and enjoyed watching it. If you liked it, please do watch my other videos and do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.